Now let's go ahead and review our project document again because I want to show you a couple of things. Uh, actually, I like TextPad a little better. Um, when I get into complicated scenarios, and I don't care whether it's dealing with .NET development, SQL Server, Transact SQL queries, or stored procedures, SSIS code, I'm, I don't care. I like to break things into smaller chunks. I like to build from little pieces that I can test individually, make sure they work, and then once I know that works, let's build another layer of complexity on top. Then I'll test that, make sure it works, and then once that works, then I'll build another layer of complexity on it. So when I look at this particular problem, the key thing that jumps out is the goal of this project. You need to be able to load a text file. So this is where I would start. I would get my text file loading routine down and finished. Get that out of the way, test it, make sure it works, and then I'm going to come back and add complexity. So let's just create ourselves an SSIS package. And this is actually going to be kind of a long series because we have a lot of different things. It's not that it's complex, it's just that we have several prerequisites, several requirements that we have to make sure we cover. So to load the text file, if you remember, we have a couple of different options. Uh, the two probably biggest ones that jump out at an SSIS developer are I can either use a bulk insert task or I can use a data flow task. Okay, so let me blow your mind real quick, okay? Um, maybe not. I, do you remember our fast parse discussions? Do you remember in Chapter 4 we did some performance tuning on the data flow task and we talked about using fast parse? All right, well, that's going to come in really important here uh, because fast parse with a data flow task can actually perform as fast as, if not outperform, the bulk insert task. Now why is that important? Let's say that they perform the same. Why is it important then? Because the bulk insert task is a pain in the you know what, <laughs> right? You got to deal with format files. It's just not flexible. There's no mapping. It's a very, very featureless way to load things up. It's just not super fast, right? So I would opt in this given case for the data flow task. And the reason is because of fast parse. And the reason I say because of fast parse is because I'm dealing with all integer data. I don't know how much you remember about fast parse. That was chapter four. Or even if you've watched those videos, that was actually a pretty important segment uh, towards the end of chapter four uh, about how to speed up the data flow task uh, when working with flat file sources. The, the point of working here with fast parse is it's going to speed up our processing. So I'm given integers, and fast parse really only works with numbers, uh, with dates. Uh, it's not going to work with strings. Uh, so since I've only got numbers, I'm going to be able to take advantage of the speed benefits of fast parse, provided I'm dealing you know, with millions of rows here. Uh, just a couple of hundred thousand rows isn't going to make it probably worth my while to make the big decision. So I'm going to opt for a data flow task. So let's drag that guy on here. We'll call it load text file data. And I'm going to go ahead and set it up. So I'm going to set up my flat file source to be the control file that we use. So let's make a new connection manager. I'll call it file. Uh, we will, that was something from an earlier video, we'll use our control file, go ahead and set it up. So it's delimited, the column names are in the first row, uh, pick up the columns that are listed right here, and under advanced, I'm going to go ahead and change these data types to map what the SQL Server data types are. So these are all integers, yet you can see SSIS has added the uh, DT string, sorry, that's a little glitch there. So I'm going to map these all to DTI4, which in SSIS data types is the four byte signed integer. That maps to the int data type in SQL Server, which is what these were all built on. 
So DTI4 for everyone. Yay. Okay. You see the columns. Very good. Got the source. Now I want to load it into SQL Server. So I go in and I grab this. I go to my SQL Server destination. I add a new destination. And I'm using the local host. Uh, you can use any database you want as long as you've created the table. Uh, the learnitfirst.com database is what I have. Uh, and remember our table that we created in the last video, the customer product purchase history. So I use that one. Mappings are one to one, each column. And so really now, step one of my developing this larger package would be to execute and just make sure I get what I'm looking for. And I did. So let's just go ahead and take a look at our text data here. Uh, let's say select all from that. Yes, mapped it up successfully. Because this is going to be one of the harder elements here, or the, this is going to be the element that's most likely to break, <laughs> okay? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and dump out my table, because we're just dealing with control file data, right? We don't want that persisting into the table. So let's go back to our project document now, uh, and let's start working with some of the others that we see here. Well. One of the things that I see is we want to be able to easily change the file names and the folder names. I'm going to go ahead and set up some variables for this. Let's make this dynamic. So what we've done thus far, let's go over here back into the data flow. If you watched our videos on at, in Chapter 5 on making sources dynamic, remember that it's the flat file source that defines things like uh, what mappings there are, but it's the file connection manager that defines where the file is located. So I want to go to the connection manager's properties, and I want to change the connection string, because you can see that actually controls where the file is and what the file name and extension are, and I want to change that. Okay, so under expressions, we're going to change the connection string, and I bring in the expression builder, and I'm going to add in some variables. So I want some variables over here that are going to use that requirement for steps two and three to have path names, folder names, and variable names in a variable, file names in a variable, sorry. So I'm going to right click over here, go to variables. Uh, we'll have this one called file name. Uh, notice my scoping is in the data flow task. That's wrong. I got to delete it. So I need to go back out to my control flow. I want this to be a package scoped variable, remember? So path to file, and that's a string. And let's just put some uh, starting data in here C colon import data. And I will terminate that with a backslash. Before I forget, I'm going to go create that folder. Okay. And you would, in the real world, have to assign whatever permissions to whatever SQL Server agent proxy that would execute this job. But we're not, we're not there yet. We're just dealing with the idea of creating the package for the time being. Uh, let's make another one for the file name. Again, a string, and we'll just make this one control file dot text for the time. Uh, was there anything else that we wanted here? We wanted to change the folder names and the locations. That's actually done with a single variable, um, path to file, and changing the file name. You can see that's done right there. Okay, good. I, I think we can uh, now go back and make this a little bit more dynamic. So let's come over here to our file connection manager's properties. Let's change our expression for the connection string to actually be the file path, the path to file plus the file name. And it just so happens because we populated our variables with this that we have our control file set. Okay. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and move that control file into the import data folder. And before we go any further, now I've made a significant change. I need to go ahead and test it, make sure that it runs. So let's go ahead. And it runs successfully. Let's just double check. Let's say we don't believe SSIS. And sure enough, it does actually run. And so we have now satisfied steps two and three. It's easy for us, sorry. It's now easy to change the folder names and locations as well as the file names. All we have to do is create the folder and change the variables to match where the new folder is. Okay, fairly simple. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we probably need to do. I think uh, this one is probably the next one that I would accomplish, I would go after. See, to me up here, this is actually a fairly, this is like icing on the cake. Right? The whole task, all the rest of this stuff doesn't really work until this step happens. So I may as well go ahead and get all this in place and then put the icing on the cake at the very end. So I'm going to wait until the last part to do this because once I actually do this, then that's going to require some work on my end for the testing to occur. So every time I execute the package and want to test it, now I've got to go create a file in that location or cause a file to quote unquote arrive in a given location. So I'm going to hold off on that until the very, very end. So the next thing is load all the files if there are multiple files in a folder. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do that very, very quickly. Uh, this is going to be your for each loop. So double click on it. My collection is a for each file numerator, uh, enumerator. There's a little bug, so you have to move off of it, then go back to select it. Which folder do you want to choose? Well, you know what? I'm going to fake it out. I'm going to configure it here and say I'd like it to be the import data, and I'd like all files, and I'd just like the name and extension, please. And what I want to do is I want to take that name and extension and store it in my file name variable. So then I'll drag this in here and come back up here to my for each loop container. And I have the expressions window right here, or the expression builder. So I can actually go up here to my uh, expression builder and we can actually define things like the directory right here. So I can use that path to file directory to be populated with my variable. So I kind of faked it out by typing it in down here, the file folder, but now I've built my expression to say actually use the variable for that. Okay, I do not want to traverse the subfolders. And I'm really, I'm ready to go now. Now, the file name variable will get updated with each file. Just to make sure, let's drag a script task. Let's go, uh, we'll use VB. Uh, we'll look at the file name. And let's just have it do one of those little message boxes that we've done so often throughout the course. Uh, if you don't remember or did not watch the videos on how to do this. You can either follow along here or go back to the start of chapter five and see how we do pop-ups. Uh, so I'm just going to grab the value of the variable file name and send it back to us. And then we'll load the, the data up. So this is a throwaway task, not one that I would really use in production. It's really just for play so that I can verify what I'm doing. Um, while we're here, let's go ahead and create some files in here. So we'll just make file one, file two, and we'll make some various. File one starts at one, file two starts at, um, I don't know, four. And I no longer need my control file here. 
So I can move that out of the directory. So what we're going to do with our for each loop is for every file in this folder that is a text file, we will load it into SQL Server. And before we start, notice that our table is empty. So let's go ahead and execute this. The for each loop is looping through every directory now. It's prompted us. It says, hey, here's one dot text. Load that up, goes to two dot text. So that way we know that we loaded it up successfully. We got the correct table name, oh, sorry, the correct file names. And when we take a look, there should be eight rows in here, and there are. This set comes from file one dot text. This set comes from two dot text. Very cool, huh? You with me so far? Were you staying with me? Because I know this gets deep. It's about to get a little bit deeper too, because now we've satisfied two, three, and four, but we have to deal with five, one, and one. So let's come back in the next video and start talking about those.